Nearly two years after the outbreak of the Ukraine crisis, images of refugees and ruins appear repeatedly in Western media. The West led by the United States accuse Russia of causing civilian casualties but itself keep adding fuel to the conflict. The information campaign and battle for hearts and minds has been as intense as in the battlefield. Before the outbreak of the conflict, the Western media, in complacency with U.S. government, spared no effort in inciting hatred and framing the conflict in line with NATO's agenda. Let's dive into how Western media manufactured escalating tensions and laid the groundwork for the Russia-Ukraine conflict before it unfolded. We have extracted 6,316 articles related to the Russia-Ukraine conflict between December 8, 2021, and February 20, 2022 from 10 Western media, including the Associated Press, Reuters, and the New York Times. The first peak occurred on December 8, with 177 articles published in a single day. This surge followed the online meeting between U.S. President Joe Biden and Russian President Vladimir Putin on December 7. Western media emphasized Biden's warning to Russia during the talks, stating that NATO would respond with military deployments and sanctions if Russia took action against Ukraine. Following this, Western media's attention on the Russia-Ukraine situation remained relatively low until February 11 when 284 articles appeared. The surge was triggered by a statement from U.S. National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan, suggesting that Russia might invade Ukraine before February 20. The U.S. political news website Politico reported that President Biden informed European leaders that the invasion by Russia was scheduled for February 16. The day before the predicted invasion date, Western media reported over 600 articles related to the Russia-Ukraine conflict, more than seven times the recent daily average. As we moved past February 16 without any notable incidents, Western media quickly shifted gears, now speculating about potential conflict dates on February 19 and 20. The coverage remained consistently high during this period, portraying a sense of synchronization and preparedness among Western media outlets for the anticipated significant conflict. A word cloud from over 6,000 articles identified 34 most frequent keywords. With Russia, Ukraine, the United States, and NATO at the center, and a particular emphasis on the alliance between NATO countries and the United States. Among the state leaders only Putin and Biden were named, emphasizing that, in Western media's view, the US and Russian leaders were the most crucial factors. NATO was regarded a puppet at best. From the quantity and the degree of correlation of coverage, it's clear that Western media are only interested in topics and events that can delegitimize Russia and inflame the conflicts between Russia and the West. Yet they turned a blind eye to Russia's efforts for negotiations and dialogues, including drafts of security guarantees to the United States and NATO. Other frequent words included war, risk, fear, crisis, threat, pretext, pressure, and concern, creating a context of imminent war. Surprisingly, Western countries, often self-proclaimed human rights advocates, did not mention words like human rights, humanitarian, or people in their reports. The term civilians was only mentioned 93 times, a mere 180th of the frequency of the term Russia. This indicates that Western countries, in escalating tensions for war, didn't seem overly troubled by the suffering of people. Additionally, the frequency of sanctions in Nord Stream indicates that coercion is the preferred tool of the West while containment is their goal. It is thus not surprising that the Nord Stream pipeline, which transports natural gas from Russia to Europe through the Baltic Sea, has become a military target. 